Warning, creepypastas are works of fiction that contain elements of gore, violence, and other disturbing themes. Viewer discretion is advised. This is your last chance to return to the sacred part of YouTube. If you are here by the end of this warning, then turn the lights down, turn the volume up, and enjoy the show. I was introduced to the video game realm a tad later than most other people. For most, if not all, of my early childhood, I was isolated from other kids and I had next to no social interactions. My days were spent in a prison-like school and my nights rotted away with mind-numbing TV. Life was dull and boring, and all I had were my stuffed animals and cheap plastic toys to talk to. That's when I got a GameCube. It was the Christmas of 2003, I believe. I was overjoyed at having my own video game station. It came with the games Super Mario Sunshine, Pac-Man World 2, and Pokemon Channel. Each of those games still holds a special place in my heart today. As soon as the GameCube was set up and ready to go, I began playing it immediately. The first game I played was Super Mario Sunshine. This game is what got me hooked onto the Mario series. After playing it for hours straight and finally finding a level I just couldn't get past, I turned to Pac-Man World 2. Amazingly enough, I got stuck on level 2, infuriated that I couldn't find the way out even though the answer was literally right in front of my eyes. I quit and started playing my first ever Pokemon game, Pokemon Channel. As soon as I turned the game on, I knew this was going to be different from the other two. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with the game. When the time came for me to name my Pikachu, I unwittingly named it Brother, short for brother. What compelled me to give him such a strange nickname that didn't even sound like a shortened version of Brother, I'll never know, but regardless, I still enjoyed playing. There is no way for me to describe the love I felt towards this game. It was everything that I had ever dreamed of. In this game, I had a friend that I could play with. It all took place in the Pokemon World 2, which I had already loved even before I got Pokemon Channel. I could watch TV with my best friend Brever, go fishing, play tic-tac-toe, talk to other Pokemon, grow a garden, build a snowman, explore ancient ruins, play musicals, sit around campfires and tell stories, gaze up at the stars. All things I never got to experience in real life, I was able to do in this virtual world with Brever, the best friend I never had. I was obviously overly addicted to the game, but I had nothing else to use up my time with, so instead I put it all into this game, oblivious to all the things happening in the real world. I preferred to live my life in this Pokemon fantasy with my best friend Brever. Brever seemed more than just a virtual animated 3D model forced to do his actions based on programming of the game. He seemed real to me. If I was ever sad one day, he would appear to look and act depressed too. If I was ever angry, he would show and express my rage during the play of the game too. If I needed something to cheer me up, he would act silly and leap at me and other idiotic things too. Later on, when I grew older and wiser, I just assumed all of these strange events never really happened, and when I was younger, I had just simply imagined it. But it was still fun to pretend he was real. As the years passed, I got more games. I had acquired a Game Boy, which along with it came more Pokemon games, where I could have more than just a single Pikachu. My interests also floated to different series like Mario and Sonic. After playing Pokemon Channel so many times and doing the same thing over and over again, it starts to get a bit boring. I started playing it less and less, and other games more and more, but I still gave Pokemon a channel to play every now and then. Eventually, I changed schools and my whole life changed. I was moved from a private Christian school to a public school and my eyes were open to reality. I started to learn new things about real life, which helped me enjoy it. People weren't mean and cruel to me, they would greet me when I passed them in the halls. 
I discovered I could do more than just play video games. I could draw, there were thousands of songs I could listen to, and my grades were dramatically rising. But the best part of all that was, I got a new friend. A real friend. One who was flesh and blood. She was funny and helped me get used to the school and was someone I could talk to besides my parents. We both had the same immature and mock everything in every possible way kind of minds. I finally had a best friend. While I started to grow in both body and mind, Pokemon Channel was slowly forgotten. I moved on to greater and better games. Almost all the things I could do with the game, I was able to do in real life now. Forever was replaced by my real life best friend. He and the game had become obsolete, forgotten on a dusty shelf in the dark corner of the room. For the next couple of years, life was golden. Each day I would learn something new, and I had a ton of fun with my best friend. I made a few other friends too, but no one could top my best friend. Every now and then, I'd get a new game, get some money, go do something with my best friend, draw something, listen to music. I never wished for anything more. All good things must come to an end. Eventually, I had to move. I protested and threw a fit, but to no avail. Trying to stop the tears from falling down my face, I told my best friend goodbye on my last day of school. For the next few nights, I cried myself to sleep at my new house, but eventually I stopped having one of the main reasons of my life. Having one of the main reasons to live in life ripped away tore a hole in my heart that will never be completely healed. But the pain eventually became less and less. I still had contact with my best friend though. We both had YouTube accounts, and we would talk to each other over the internet. We call each other too and have sleepovers, and sometimes see a movie together. But it hurt not to have her at the school anymore. I made some new friends at my new school, even more than my old school, but none of them were as funny as my best friend. None of them could replace her. Just when I thought I could get used to this lifestyle, one of the most dreadful things happened. For her sake, I won't post what my friend did, but she did something horrible, and my mom refused to let me speak to her. I won't post what my friend did, but she did something horrible, and my mom refused to let me speak to or see her ever again. My heart was utterly smashed into thousands of pieces. I felt like I had nothing to left to live for. My best friend, and what felt like my only friend, was now gone from me forever. I now sunk back into my old habits, playing video games and isolating myself from the rest of the world. I didn't like to go out anymore. I refused to leave my room except to go to school, eat, use the restroom, and visit my dad every other weekend. Now that my best friend had been snatched away from me, and that I didn't real life anymore. I needed something to replace them. Searching through my ancient shelf of old games, I pulled out Pokemon Channel. I brushed the dust off the cover. It felt like it had been an eternity since I'd gained a home game. I entered the desk into the GameCube, grabbed my controller, and waited to create my old virtual friend. fell down my cheek as memories flooded back while I stared at the TV screen. After a moment of soaking in the old nostalgia, I selected continue. I eagerly selected yes when the information appeared over my currently saved game, asking if it was correct. As the transition of Pokeballs rolled across the screen, we just couldn't wait to see forever again. When the transition was over, I appeared to be in my room. The normal cutscene where Pikachu is asleep the shelf and wakes up and didn't play, but at this moment I had completely forgotten about that. The only thing on my mind was forever. As I searched around the room though, it wasn't anywhere in sight. Dibbity? Dibbity! 
The deli bird that delivers the goods you buy from the shop and squirrel channel was at the door. I smiled warmly at the sight. I remembered I bought something from the channel almost every day when I was younger. I thought I must have bought something the last time I played and completely forgotten about it. Curious about what was in the delivery, I eagerly headed for the door. Pika? A deep moaning sound stopped me before I could reach the door. I turned to the screen and saw Brever climbing out from under the bed. He looked beaten up and depressed. I had never seen him climb out from underneath the bed before, except for when he's searching for the Pokemon Mini in the beginning of the game. When he turned and saw me, a shocked expression came over his face, like it normally should. Hey, brother, it's me, I whispered, even though I knew he couldn't hear me. Instead of a joyous look and cheering, Pika Pika, he acquired an infuriated look on his face. I was a bit confused as to why he was angry, but before I could ponder at the subject, Nebity! The deli bird called again from the door. Banishing the whole incident from my thoughts, I turned and opened the door. I was comforted when the deli bird handed over the box and Brewer smiled and waved as the deli bird flew off. A package arrived with merchandise from Shop and Squirtle. I quickly pressed A as the message appeared. I wonder what was inside as Brewer leaned in the box and took out the items. You got Pikachu TVZ. The Pikachu TVZ has been displayed. A menacing and quite gruesome looking Pikachu TV was set up in replacement of my old Voltorb TV. It looked like a Pikachu's head facing towards you with its jaws wide open. Inside its mouth was the TV screen with its fangs hanging over the top and bottom. It looked like the skin was tearing and ripped apart in places. Like the TV screen was too large for its mouth. I was a bit shocked at how scary the TV looked. You got a red wallpaper Z. Wallpaper has been displayed. I gasped when the wallpaper was put up. It was dark red like dried blood. Pikachu's with sick, twisted smiles were repeated all across it. They each were bright red, like freshly drawn blood. I was beginning to worry. You got Pikachu Dollsy. The doll has been displayed. I winced with fear when I saw the morbid Pikachu placed on top of the shelves. It had the same eerie grin as the Pikachu's on the wallpaper, except with long fangs. Its eyes were small, ruby red, and dilated. The tip of its tail was curved inwards like a hook, and it had a sharp-looking claws. Numerous dried streaks of blood ran across the length of its body. You got Pikachu Doll Z. The doll has been displayed. You got Pikachu Doll Z. The doll has been displayed. You got Pikachu Doll Z. The doll has been displayed. The same sequence happened over and over until the entire room was filled with the disturbing Pikachu dolls. They replaced all of the other dolls. Brever got up and looked around the room. He nodded in satisfaction and walked towards the TV. I sat in my chair stricken with fear. Even though it had been years since I played the game, I knew these items were never in it. Pika! A threatening and commanding call came from Pikachu. He was standing in front of the TV and giving me a glare. I knew he wanted me to go over there. I walked to the TV and turned it on. It opened to the report channel like normal, but to my horror, the screens looked like it had blood dripping down it. I changed the channels and they all looked that way. I quickly opened my diary, which in this game is the start menu, and clicked on the TV's tab. I chose a Voltorb TV. But as soon as I did, my diary closed without me pressing B. Brever was staring at me with a threatening glare and shook his head disapprovingly. Brever turned back to the TVs and changed it to the Fortune channel. This channel seemed normal except for the blood dripping down the screen. Choose your cookie! The words drifted by the bottom of the TV screen. I chose the top one like I always do. The cookie floated down in the channel's hand and cracked open. Do you really want to know your fortune? 
The words appeared on the screen. I froze with fear. Something about that fortune seemed eerie. It appeared that the Chansey on the screen was laughing. Forever changed the channel again. He changed it to the relaxation channel. Instead of the fluffy Mareep, what greeted me with morbid Pikachus that looked just like the dolls jumping over the fence. I quickly pressed B and went back to the center of the room. Normally, Prever would turn around and motion me to come back and watch it with him, but this time, he didn't seem to care. I walked over to my old painting, a beautifully colored Jirachi surrounded by a cute Pikachu border hung against the wall. I sighed with relief. At least one thing was still normal. I took a few moments to stare at the old painting. Mostly just because I didn't want to look at the gruesome wallpaper or the horrifying tools. Brever is looking at the painting too. Chills went through my spine as the message appeared, even though it was normal for Pikachu to stare at your painting with you. I pressed B, and sure enough, Brever was standing in front of the painting. It seemed like he had a sad expression, like he was remembering long lost memories. He turned to me, still with the same depressed expression. He looked like he was about to cry. I felt sorry for him and wished there was something I could do to cheer him up. Brever walked up to me and asked me a question, which is normal for your Pikachu to ask you a question, and every now and then. But what made my blood chill was what he asked. Brever wants to know if you still love him. It had a O. Oh, Yes, and X, no option. Rever has never asked that before. I immediately clicked no. He smiled and bent over laughing. I was a bit confused as to why he was having a laughing fit. When he was done laughing, he looked back up at me with an evil smile. A message appeared at the top of the screen. Rever knows when you're lying. He turned back to watch the TV. By this point, I didn't know what to do anymore. I knew for sure that all of this wasn't supposed to be happening. I thought that maybe if I restarted my GameCube, everything would go back to normal. I got up and reached for the restart button, but when I pressed it, nothing happened. I pressed it a second time, and still nothing. The game cannot be reset right now. The message appeared on my screen. My heart stopped beating for a second. After dumbly staring at the screen for a solid minute, I sat back down and decided I would continue playing. Might as well see where this goes, I whispered to myself. I just looked around the room for a minute. Other than the wallpaper, dolls, and TV, everything seemed to be the same. I tried to smile while looking at the old Pokemon Mini and posters, but I couldn't bring myself to. The normally cute and cheerful music seemed to make the room more dark and disturbing. It looked as if all of the morbid dolls had their eyes focused on me, like they're about to reach out and grab me, and slowly tear me apart and devour my flesh. Brever wants to go outside. The message appeared on the top of the screen. Before I could do anything though, Brever went outside and the game forced me to follow him. My breath caught in my throat when I went outside. The sky was blood red with even darker red clouds swirling in it. Strewn all across the lawn were dead Pokemon corpses. I couldn't tell what many of them were. Most of their limbs were torn off, their faces shredded, trails everywhere. I felt sick, like I was about to throw up. Brever circled around them, then turned to me and gave me an evil grin. He walked up to me and asked me a question. Brever wants to know if you like what he's done to the place. I immediately clicked X. His sick grin deepened even more. He walked over to a skinny corpse and threw it at me. Its body parts broke off and flew everywhere as it bounced off the screen. After many agonizing minutes of being forced to watch Brever toy with the dead body parts, he walked over to the garden. When we stepped into the garden, two 
plants were fully grown. Instead of fruits, they had grown Pikachu heads. Forever plucked one and started to slowly eat it. My lunch started to rise up in my throat, but I forced it back down. I tried to turn away from the gruesome sight, but something glued my eyes to the screen. After taking his time, Forever walked over and ate another head. Once he was done, he cast me a wicked smile and leaped out of the garden. Again, I was forced to follow him. Forever was apparently done messing around outside and went straight inside. I was hoping he was done and we would just stay inside. I now much preferred the more with dolls over the body parts, but he wasn't done showing me the world he had created. Almost as soon as we went inside, Forever went immediately to the back door. Guess who was forced to follow yet again? When we went outside, there weren't any more corpses, much to my relief, but the sky was still an ominous blood red. When I tried to go back inside, he wouldn't let me. Forever would just turn and give me a disapproving shake of his head, so I was forced to stand there. The Viridian Forest bus pulled up and Forever walked up to it without me even clicking on it. The transition played normally, the bus riding over the map to the Viridian Forest. But when we got there, the whole forest was on fire. Dead Pokemon were lying everywhere as the trees wildly burned, their bodies charred black by the flames. River seemed unaffected by the blazing fire. He skipped over to a patch of mushrooms. They looked like they were bleeding. River ate one without asking for permission. He gave a satisfied nod when he was done. Then he ran over to the bell that starts the Pokemon concert. Instead of River being surrounded by Clefairies, he was surrounded by those morbid Pikachu plushies. Using the bells, they played the most haunting and blood chilling tune I had ever heard. I was awestruck. It sounded so beautiful yet so horrifying. It was high pitched and made my ears ache, but I was in a trance and I couldn't think to turn the volume down. After what seemed like years, the play was finally over. Glancing around, Brever seemed satisfied with the burning forest and headed back towards the bus. Again, I was forced to stand outside my house while I awaited the next horrors Brever would inflict upon my eyes. I thought he would want to take them out snowfall bus, but he had other ideas. He just let that bus pass on. Instead, he decided to take the bus to Cobalt Beach next. Same simple transitions, same horrifying scene. The beach was littered with pieces of corpses of the Pokemon you would normally find roaming around there. The ocean looked like blood, and floating in it were more body parts of, from the dead Pokemon. It then became apparent to me that Brever didn't like the other Pokemon. We then played a game of tic-tac-toe. Instead of using rocks, we used internal organs for the pieces. Forever beat me by a long shot, although that was because I couldn't think straight, using entrails as X's and O's while being surrounded by dead corpses. He laughed when he beat me, like this was all normal and supposed to be happening. Then, for a brief moment, a look of regret and sadness swept over his face. I felt a longing to reach out and comfort him, so I used a sea stick to pet him, but as soon as the cursor touched him, his normal, infuriated, and demented look came back. He ran off over to the fishing area, with a little person called me, willingly followed behind. Brever stood on his rock and threw out his fishing line into the blood ocean, waiting for a bite. I did nothing, for there was nothing I could do. But he turned to me and gave me a menacing glare, like I was supposed to be helping him. That's when I remembered the bait. I clicked on the jar labeled bait, but instead of a chocolate glazed donut, I got a rotting brain. It was falling apart and covered in a greenish brown mold, yet it was still throbbing. I quickly tossed it into the ocean. Shortly afterwards, Brever caught something on his line. With a great yank, the creature came flying out of the ocean. 
I swear to God, this creature shall forever haunt my dreams. It looked like an oversized, dark, purple magic carp, but it was foaming at the mouth while a green, acidic blood poured out from numerous gashes along its body. Multiple organs clung to the many spikes sticking out from its body. Parts of its scales had been scraped away, exposing muscle underneath. Some parts of the muscle looked like they had been eaten, leaving bones sticking out. It flopped around and gasped for air while disturbing. It flopped around and gasped for air while disturbing gurgling sounds emitted from its mouth. I screamed when I saw the vile creature. River turned to me as if he had heard me and grinned. He slowly climbed down from the rock, taking as much time as possible to let that wretched creature suffer that much more. Then he started to eat the magic carp while it was still alive. I screamed again and covered my mouth as my eyes were forced to watch the gruesome sight. Once he was done with his meal, he turned back to me and smiled a happy, playful smile. I couldn't believe this monster was once my close virtual friend that I looked forward to seeing every day after school. After that traumatizing event, Brevard cheerfully skipped along down the beach, back to the bus stop, singing, Pikachu! His merriment made the situation that much more horrifying. While waiting for the Mount Snowfall bus, Brevard stood in the middle of the walkway, staring at me. His face was blank and showed no signs of emotion. Even though I knew he couldn't hear me, I whispered, Why? Why are you doing this? A tear started to fall down my face. Brevor made this world to please you. My blood turned to ice when that message appeared at the top of the screen. Brevor cast me another sick, wicked grin that stretched from cheek to cheek. More tears started to sneak their way down my face. The Mount Snowfall bus finally arrived. I don't know if I was happy at the sight or petrified at the thought of facing another Bruce was seen. Same thing as before. Innocence transitions, not so innocent sights. Brass bitten carcasses lay strewn out ungloriously across the frozen land. Most half buried in snow. Surprisingly, there was no blood or entrails lying about. This area had a more sad atmosphere than morbid. River slowly walked over to where the Kikleon and Jigglypuff would normally sing, but since they were dead and buried under the snow, who knows where he took their place. River sang the most beautiful, yet sad song I have ever heard. His harmonious voice sounded like violins playing the most tear-jerking tune I had ever heard. He had a depressed and sorrowful, yet focused expression while he sang the tune. Which is just what the song sounded like. I couldn't control the tears that started flooding down my face while he sang. My poor emotional heart broke in two, listening to his sorrow-drenched melody. After what seemed like an eternity, River finally finished. He looked me dead straight in the eyes with the most sorrowful, depressed, and utterly hopeless expression anyone had ever seen. I longed so much to hold him in my arms and comfort him, but I quickly turned away and ran towards the second half of Mount Snowfall. We stood in front of the ruins of truth. For many moments, River just stood dead still while staring at the ruins. Then he glanced at me, a deep, meaningful look in his eyes. He ran inside. It was jet black inside, like it was supposed to be. He used a thunderbolt to light the electric flowers, which caused the entire room to light up. All along the walls, ceiling, and floors, many different words were written in blood. Help me! Why, I must die! Kill me! 
It's so cold. I'm so lonely. Where is she? Go back. Why can't I die? Berber walked over to the other side of the ruins, where the true or false tablet stood. I was forced to click on it. Brever was abandoned by his best friend years ago, to be replaced by a new best friend, and was left to rot alone in this virtual world, true or false. I finally understood what all of this meant. All of those words written on the walls, they were from Brever. This was all my fault. I left him, my best friend, to die alone. No, he couldn't even die if he wanted to. He was forced to drag out his miserable existence over the years. I didn't blame him for wanting revenge on me. I deserved this! I slapped myself across the face. What was I thinking? River and Pokemon Channel was just a game. I wasn't supposed to devote my life to them. They were only meant to be created to amuse and entertain the mind of a child. They weren't real. I took a minute to ponder over my last statement. They weren't real. I thought about all the things Brever had done to traumatize me and get revenge for abandoning him for so long. Hell, this was all just too real. I selected O for true, because it was. I admitted to abandoning Brever and leaving him alone to rot. Instead of the tablet sinking back into the ground, it glowed green as if an approval was made. The screen slowly faded to black, except for Brever. He stood in the center of the screen with a tired, angry, yet sad expression. I didn't know what to think of him anymore. I hated him and wished I could really kill him. But I felt sorry and wanted with all my heart to help him and make things better. Brever feels the same way about you. Those messages didn't shock me anymore. If anything, I was expecting it. After a few long moments of just staring at each other, I finally started to lose it. What are you going to do with me now? I asked. Brever wants you to suffer the same way he did, the game answered. He cast at me one last wicked grin, the whitest and most grotesque I had ever seen, and the screen cut to black. After a moment, the title screen appeared. The continue button was gone. I sighed in relief that this horrifying union was over. I got up and looked at my desk. On it was a Pikachu doll Z.